Hello and welcome to Follow the Money. I'm Rain Musni. Join us as we explore the tools and insights you need to jumpstart your financial journey. The chair of India's Adani Group has been indicted in the United States on charges of alleged securities fraud and bribery. The case focuses on claims that the conglomerate misled investors about its finances while expanding its global footprint. Authorities charged Adani and two other executives at Adani Green Energy, his nephew Segar Adani and Vinit Jain, with agreeing between 2020 and 2024 to pay more than $250 million in bribes to Indian government officials to obtain solar energy supply contracts expected to yield $2 billion in profits. The fundamentals of our company are very strong. Our balance sheet is healthy and assets robust. Our EBITDA levels and cash flows have been very strong and we have an impeccable track record of fulfilling our debt obligations. That was a soundbite from Gautam Adani in February 2 last year. Well, the Adani Group did not immediately respond to requests for comment outside business hours in India, where the charges were announced early Thursday morning. India's embassy in Washington also did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Now, according to court records, a judge has issued arrest warrants for Gautam Adani and Segar Adani, and prosecutors plan to hand those warrants to foreign law enforcement. Gautam Adani is worth $69.8 billion, it's according to Forbes magazine, making him the world's 22nd richest person. Bill Huang, the founder of Archegos Capital, is set to be sentenced for what prosecutors describe as one of the largest financial frauds in U.S. history. Huang's trading strategy led to losses exceeding $10 billion and caused shockwaves in global markets. Huang claims his investments were made in good faith, blaming market volatility for the collapse. But prosecutors argue his leveraged bets and deceptive practices created a house of cards that put the entire financial system at risk. The sentencing expected next month could result in decades behind bars. From one Huang to another Huang, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang insists the company is positioned for long-term success. He made the statement as NVIDIA's latest forecast has failed to meet expectations despite record revenue of $18 billion last quarter. The company predicts slower growth ahead of its ahead in its uh, core AI chip business, causing stocks to drop nearly 7%. NVIDIA remains a dominant player in AI and gaming technology, but critics say it faces stiff competition and a potential decline in demand. Well, an automaker announces job layoffs due to losses. Ford says it will cut around 14% of its European workforce as part of restructuring. More than 2,000 jobs will be lost in Germany, 800 in the UK, and 300 across the rest of Europe. Nissan, Stellantis, and General Motors have also announced layoffs to cut costs as the industry faces challenges, including weak demand for electric vehicles. This trend of layoffs among automakers highlights the pressure of global automotive industry faces, particularly with a shift in electric, or rather, shift to electric vehicles and rising operational costs. It signals a major adjustment phase for global business as companies restructure to stay competitive in an evolving market. For the global economy, it underlines the importance of innovation and flexibility in navigating industry transitions. You'll be aware that the global automotive industry is going through a period of massive disruption at the moment. And nowhere is that situation probably more intense than in Europe. We've got unprecedented competition, regulation, and lots of economic head headwinds. So as we thought about how we make sure we protect and future-proof our business, we have realized that we need to restructure. 
In a major shift, Comcast has announced plans to spin off its cable network division, focusing instead in broadband and streaming services. The move comes amid declining subscriber numbers in traditional cable television. The spin off affects the bulk of its fading NBC Universal Cable TV networks, including MSNBC and CNBC. As the company said, it is repositioning itself for growth in the streaming area. Shares of the company were off less than 1% after the announcement that Comcast would separate its entertainment and news channels, including USA Network, Oxygen, E, Sci Fi, and Golf Channel, into a new publicly traded company. Comcast will retain the core of NBC Universal's entertainment assets, including its NBC Broadcast Network, Sports and News, its film and television studios, and the Bravo Network, which are seen as fueling growth for its Peacock streaming service. It also plans to keep the expanding theme park business. The spin off is expected to raise billions for Comcast, but industry analysts say it reflects the end of an era for cable TV. Competitors like Disney and Netflix have dominated the streaming space, leaving traditional networks struggling to adapt. More updates in business and the economy in a moment. Stay on BNC and follow the money. Welcome back to Follow the Money. Bitcoin has shattered records, surging past $94,000 for the first time. Investors cite rising adoption by financial institutions and global economic uncertainty as driving forces behind the rally. However, critics warn of increasing volatility and speculation. The record high follows a year of wild price swings, with Bitcoin doubling its value since January. Now, as interest grows, regulators around the world are ramping up oversight of cryptocurrency markets. The weekend continues to drive a tourism boom in Japan, with the number of visitors reaching a record high last month. Japan welcomed 3.31 million tourists in October alone, up from 2.87 million in September, and exceeding the previous monthly record of 3.29 million set in July. The country's famous autumn leaf colors also contributed to the increased tourism demand. Through October, about 30.2 million people visited Japan, just shy of the annual record of 31.9 million set in 2019 before the COVID pandemic shut global borders. This rising tourism in Japan reflects the global economic impact of exchange rate fluctuations, where a weak yen makes the country more affordable for international travelers. Here at home, the Philippine Economic Zone Authority says it's on track to meet its target of 200 billion pesos in investment pledges for the year. This comes as investment approvals have already reached 186 billion pesos, surpassing the total recorded for the entire year of 2023, which was 175 billion pesos. This also represents a 32% increase compared to the 141 billion in investments in the same period last year. This significant growth reflects strong business confidence and the attractiveness of the country's economic zones for both domestic and foreign investors. The PESA board has approved 222 new and expansion projects from January 1 to November 13. These projects are expected to generate 60,000 direct jobs and produce over $3 billion in exports, further strengthening the economy and creating opportunities for the Filipino workforce. Vehicle sales are rise in October. That's according to data from the Chamber of Automotive Manufacturers of the Philippines and the Truck Manufacturers Association. Car sales increased by 8.9% topping 384,000. Light commercial vehicles have the largest share at 73%. In terms of companies, Toyota Motor Philippines ranked first, followed by Mitsubishi. 12 firms, on the other hand, reported a drop in sales. The rise in vehicle sales signals growing consumer confidence and economic stability. 
The Banco Central na Pilipinas expects to conclude its probe into unauthorized deductions from GCash by the second week of December. Apart from identifying the root cause of the issue, the BSP says it is also assessing potential vulnerabilities in the mobile wallet operator's system. The central bank is also reviewing the company's compliance with regulatory standards. GCash attributes the recent deductions to a system error, particularly in its Send Ang Pao service. This investigation is crucial for maintaining trust in the country's digital payment system and ensuring that users' funds remain secure. Meanwhile, top global leaders and tech giants gathered in San Francisco for a crucial AI safety summit hosted by the Biden administration. The goal? To set safety standards for the development and use of artificial intelligence. But the meeting was overshadowed by Donald Trump's promise to scrap Biden's landmark executive order on AI safety if he returns or as he returns to the White House. Trump called the order over-regulation, while Biden defended it as a necessary check on an emerging technology that could shape global security. Critics argue that Biden's policies could stifle innovation, but advocates warn that without strict standards, the risks of AI misuse are too high to ignore. Ever wonder how much the CEO of a top AI company makes in a year? Well. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman received just $76,001 in salary last year, despite the company raising billions from investors, including Microsoft. Now, while some applaud the modest pay, critics question whether it represents transparency or a PR strategy, especially given the financial risks associated with AI research. OpenAI remains a key player in the race to build generative AI systems. Finally, a new player has entered the world of soccer ownership. The Arnault family, known for their global luxury brand empire, has officially acquired Paris FC, a second-tier soccer club in France. No values have been disclosed, but the agreement is due to be finalized by the end of the month. The deal is described as a long-term investment with the possibility of leveraging LVMH brands for sponsorships. Fans hope the move will help the club reach the top tier of French football. We are not doing this to earn money. I don't want to say we're doing this for the projects. That might sound pretentious. But we're doing this to evoke emotion among the public because we wanted to do a good and positive thing around sport. It's important to know that we are not here to change everything and turn tables over. We are betting on the current team and staff, and we are not here to claim we know the right thing to do and change a vast number of things in the club. On the contrary, we're here to work with the current foundations and improve everything everything so that the current team can rise to the League One. Critics, however, warn that the growing influence of corporate money in sports risks overshadowing the game's community roots. The proposed takeover continues a trend of billionaires buying soccer clubs across Europe while overhauling a Paris-based club that could potentially rival League One champions Paris Saint-Germain, owned by Qatar Sports Investments. <coughs> Today, two-thirds of all League One and League Two clubs are controlled by foreign capital. I think we have to find a better balance. And if the other Parisian club tomorrow, which I hope so, and I will let Antoine talk about this, has high ambitions and can stand out with a strong national investment, that would make me very happy. And this is the case today. Paris FC have struggled to find a fan base, with the average attendance last season at just under 5,500 in their 19,000 capacity Charlotte Stadium, despite tickets being free since last November. And that is it for today's edition of Follow the Money. I'm Rain Musni. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it here on BNC, the billionaire news channel, always on top. When it opened its first store at SM Megamall.
A decade later, the furniture and homeware brand now boasts three stores, offering Filipinos a wide range of home essentials. I am with the Vice President of Crate and Barrel Philippines, Stephen Texan. Hello, Stephen. Hi, Ferdy. How are you? Great. I'm, we are super excited to celebrate with you today. Tell us about what's happening. We are extremely excited as well. In 2014, Crate and Barrel Philippines opened its first store in SM Mega Mall. Today marks our 10 years in, here in the Philippines. Wow, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of design for 10 years. Yes, a lot of design, a lot of timeless pieces that have served a lot of our customers. Yes. But what are the other customers going to expect uh, when they come to the stores this season? Given that we're in the holiday season, some of our exciting holiday merchandise just came in, some fun ornaments and a very fun nutcracker figurine. Texan shares that Crate and Barrel has experienced steady growth each year, becoming the go-to destination for home essentials in Metro Manila, Cebu, and Pampanga. In 2025, Crate and Barrel will introduce new initiatives designed to make the shopping experience even more enjoyable for its customers. We will be introducing our design desk service, which will make the design process more seamless for both our customers and design partners. Our new gift registry app will be launched so our customers can easily create and share their wish list with just a few clicks. And we'll be expanding our collection with fresh designs and collaborations that meet the modern mindset. You can truly feel the magic of Christmas here at Crate and Barrel for their 10th year anniversary. Go check them out at their stores in Mega Mall, Aura, and over at SM Makati. This is Ferdi Salvador reporting for BNC Always on Top.